Okay, so Nmap's an incredibly useful tool to scan our networks. And what I have here is I have my, my uh, home lab up here. I have a Windows 10 device right here in a virtual machine. I have my Windows Server 2019 running here. I have my Windows Server machine and I have my Kali Linux machine. And all of these are hooked up on a virtual network, okay? Now I understand already, you know, what the IP addresses are, but if we need to find that out now, we can just do a quick IP config and we can find the IP address for our devices here. So this is our domain controller two. And if we want to do a simple nmap command, we just open up a terminal in Kali and we type nmap. And then we would target the IP address of the machine we want to target. So if I adjust this and we could see here, our IP address is 192.168.1.19. I made it 19 because it's a Windows Server 2019 machine, so I made it easy on myself. So I do 192.168.1.19. That's all I have to do, nmap and then the IP. I hit enter, nmap starts, and it's gonna scan that IP address. It gives you a timestamp and says it's starting nmap, then it's gonna process, and here we see and we see the host is up. There's these ports that are open. We have DNS right here, Kerberos, 88, uh, RPC, MSRPC, NetBIOS, LDAP, 389. All these different ports are up for our Windows Server 2019 machine. So that's great. What are some other useful commands? Let's, let's keep going. What if we want to scan an IP version 6 network, not IPv4? Well, that's pretty simple. You just type in nmap and then dash six, dash six for IPv6, and then you write out the IPv6 address. So this is the same IPv6 address for this device, you can see, ends in 3007, the IPv6 address. So we could start our nmap scan using the IPv6 address. That could be pretty helpful. A lot of networks now are just using IPv6. So here we get the same information as we did here. There's different types of scans you could do with Nmap. All right, let's do, we'll make these IPv6 scans and we can add different flags as they're known within Nmap. Okay, so we can do a flag for a certain type of TCP scan called a SYN scan. An SYN scan is conducted by uh, sending out a SYN packet or synchronization packet as the first part of the TCP handshake process. So we know the TCP handshake process starts with a synchronization packet. The target would respond back with a SYN ACK packet, synchronization acknowledgement, and then we would respond back with an acknowledgement packet. Great. And here what we see, we did a, a synchronization or a SYN scan, and we got the same information. Okay. Now say we want to target the operating system. We want to figure out what operating system is being used on the device. Okay. For that, we can do dash O. Dash O will attempt to have Nmap detect the operating system. Let's see how good of a job Nmap does at that. Start Nmap up with that dash O flag. It does, it does detect that this is running off of Oracle VirtualBox using Oracle VirtualBot's NIC, which is how I organize my virtual machines in this lab. So that is true. So it is detecting a portion of this, but I think because it's running through virtualization that it's having a trouble. I mean, this is the TCP IP fingerprint, but the yeah, no exact OS matches for host. Okay, it just detects that it's a virtual machine. So, and it gives us a fingerprint there. And that's the same as what it gave here. So, all right, the virtualization is what's given it, throwing it off. That's okay. We also have a UDP scan, okay? Just like the uh, SYN scan. Well, the SYN scan would be a portion of a TCP scan. You can do dash scan, lowercase s, and then dash u for a UDP scan. It's gonna send a UDP, it's gonna be, a, as you might guess, UDP type of scan, not a TCP scan. If you ever want, to look at the status of your Nmap scan, 
just select the terminal that you're working in and press the down arrow and it'll give you a status update so it's telling us 45 this is 25 percent done that UDP scan can take quite a while so let's start another scan on the right hand window we'll keep scanning the Windows server device and we could do our TCP that's going to do a full TCP scan so it's going to try and complete the TCP handshake process not just send out the synchronization packet now it may get bogged down but it completed that one pretty quickly and we see the same information that we did before now if you want to detect more information not just the operating system you could do an aggressive scan and the aggressive scan is going to tell you uh, more information about the operating system it's going to tell you about the uh, any versions of the protocols that are running any scripts it's also going to do trace route to help figure out how many hops or network connections are between you and the target so that's an normally referred to as an aggressive scan with a dash a flag and this is a way to do a very fast scan if you're just doing the nmap to enumerate your network you control your network then dash a is a good way to go so here we have some different versions here and in this, when we did this scan, it actually detected the operating system a little better. It detected that it was a Windows operating system. It says it's guessing that it's a Windows 10 operating system. It's really Windows Server 2019. That's not a bad guess, though. Uh, or it could be Windows Server 2012. Does it have 2019 on here? It says it could be any one of these operating systems. It's most likely guess is that it's a Windows Server 10. Or not a Windows Server 10, Windows, uh, Microsoft Windows 10. It doesn't say server 2019 on here. It does say it could possibly be server 2012. So not quite the most accurate and it's gonna do its best guess for you. And if you're doing a penetration test, it could be useful to try and guess the operating system so you can look up exploits for that operating system. But you can't fully rely on it. Now we have some additional information. We have the normal information we saw within the, the port scans. Okay, but we also see our domain. This is cybercraft.com. And we see uh, different portions, different information about the protocols. So like, if we look at our old scan, this is all we would see, the port, the state, and the service. And here we see the port, state, service, and version. Okay, so we see the version of like RPC. We see Microsoft Windows RPC, Windows NetBIOS. So these are the different versions of these services that are running on the device. It also gives us network uh, statistics, a trace route. There's one hop, of course, because it's on the same network. So it's a lot more information than we would see in a regular or a, a SYN scan. Okay, another way we can do this is we can set a specific timing. Okay, so you may want to set your scan up in a way that it it evades uh, detection, okay? So what we can do is we can set up a timing from zero to five. Zero being the slowest and five being the most aggressive. Now a zero scan would take many hours, okay? Even a T1 scan would take uh, multiple hours to conduct. These are very slow scans, but they're designed to evade detection from an IDS. And if we did a T5 scan, this is, often referred to as like insane speeds as the fastest scan you can do. But if you want to evade detection from an IDS, you would do like a T0 and a T1. You'd let Nmap run for many hours. And you see the T5 scan last was uh, completed right away. If we do a T, I'm gonna do T2, but I'm gonna stop it because we'd be here all day. We do a T2 scan. This one's gonna take a long time. So right there, it's about 1% done. Let's wait a few seconds. 3% done. So this may take 20 minutes to half an hour. If you did a T0 scan, that could take many hours, okay? Especially depending on the distance, the network length between you and the target. But I'm going to control C. Control C is how you could stop a scan. And we could do that. Let's see how our UDP scan is going, by the way. 52% done. So just to show you how long UDP scans can take. That one's still going. We'll let that one run and we'll work on the right window. 
So you, remember your timings are zero to five, five being fastest, zero being the slowest. Now we could also do a version scan. If you just wanna see the version, like we, we talked about the aggressive scan, we do scan V. So here we see port, state, service, and version. You could also scan a specific port if you like, or a, a range of ports. So say we want to scan only DNS. We can do dash P, okay, and then we specify the port number. Here we see port 53 is open. So we're only scanning DNS here. So this could make it a lot faster. So if you wanna do like a very a slow scan, but you had a specific exploit in mind, and you, you knew it only was gonna work on a certain range of ports, or you only wanted it to work on certain ports, you can just scan those ports to kind of speed up that type of scan. We could also do a port range. So 53-500, dash no spaces. Now that scanned all the ports between 53 and 500. So we see that these ports are open. And if it's not listed here, the port is closed. So you have the ports. You could also scan top ports. All right, so you do dash top, dash ports, specify a number for the top ports, and we're gonna get the top 1500 ports there, that like the most common ports. And really, I mean, it's gonna show all the ports because all the ports that are currently open are commonly used ports. I don't think there's any that we miss there. No. So we're not using any ports on this Windows server machine that are not commonly used ports. Okay, if you just want to discover the host, you can do dash SN, okay? And that'd be lowercase SN. So we can just see the MAC address of the host. So if you didn't want to scan the ports themselves, you can also do an ACK scan if you want to send an acknowledgement packet. The idea with it is just sending an ACK scan is that you're sending the last part of a TCP IP handshake. So in the TC in the SYN scan, you're sending the synchronization packet, but you're not receiving any. You're not att uh, attempting to complete a handshake process with the acknowledgement scan. You're just sending the ACK packet. You could also scan multiple IPs or specific IPs. So we can scan a range of IPs, for example. Actually, this is pretty useful. So if we want to scan a range of IPs, we can scan uh, 192.168.1.1, and then we could do dash, and we could go 20, okay? So that's gonna scan IPs ending in dot one, you know, 161, 168.1.1 to 168.1.1. We can scan those and determine which of those IPs is up on the network and which one of them are not. And then we'll get results for each of those. So of course right now, what we're gonna see here, we got 1.1, that's the internet gateway. Then we have this one, uh, which is the Windows Server Machine. All right, but I hope this was helpful for looking at these different Nmap commands. Thanks so much. I hope everybody has a, a great day today. Thank you.